Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for January 31st, 2021. I'm so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today, and I hope that you will be blessed. And we hope and pray that soon we will be able to gather in person. The good news is that the positivity numbers that we're using to guide when we can return to worship have improved substantially over the last week and a half. The bad news is the health experts tell us that February it's going to get worse again. So I pray for your patience. I pray for your understanding. And I pray that however we can gather, even if it is virtually and online, that you might recognize, feel, and experience the presence of God and the love of the people of Hannah United Methodist Church for you. These are difficult times, no doubt, and they are times that are trying us all. But if we are faithful, if we trust God, and if we show the love of Christ by caring for one another through keeping our distance, then I'm certain that we will be blessed. Of critical importance is during this time when we cannot gather, Use this time to work on your relationship with Christ, to spend time in prayer, in Bible study, and to spend time listening to the Spirit speak to you, guiding you, and showing you the way that we can make our church stronger, make our community stronger, that we can grow in our love for Christ and our mission in the world. Trust God. This indeed is God's plan for us. And through these times of trial and difficulty, know that the Spirit is calling us forth, calling us to strengthen not only our own faith, but to be stronger witnesses of that faith in the world for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the sake of all of those people who need hope, who need life, life eternal, life everlasting, who need to know the love and grace of Christ. During this time, it has become so evident and clear to us how much we need one another. Think of those people who we can reach because of this new found, newly acute recognition of the value of the community of God in Jesus Christ. I thank you so much for all of your faithfulness. I thank you for your faithfulness and giving and remind you that you can always make your offerings online at hannahumc.org or by mailing a check to the church. God has not abandoned us in this difficult time. Indeed, God is with us as powerfully as ever. And if we are faithful, we will experience growth, we will experience mission and power, we will experience the presence of Christ like we never have before. Let us give thanks today for the way that God is guiding us and leading us through even this difficult time. Let us now open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that there are so many ways that we fall short. We fall short of your glory. We fall short even of our hope for ourselves and for our community and church. But you, Lord, are the one who is faithful. You guide us. You instruct us. You fill us with your spirit. So may during this time of worship our spirits be filled. May we be fed by your word. And may we be comforted by the abiding presence of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for that presence, and we thank you for all of the gifts and graces that you give us. Help us to focus on your presence. Help us to focus on your word. Help us to focus on your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And let us now join together and sing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
let us now gather together those concerns that are on our hearts. Let us remember those people who need our prayers, especially those who are sick with the COVID virus or any other illness, those who have lost people during this time of isolation, for those who care for the sick, especially the nurses and doctors, but also for those who care for the sick in their homes. Let us pray for all of us who are growing tired and weary of this time, and let us pray that God will shorten this time so that we can gather together again in one another's presence, and hug and enjoy each other as God intended. Let us remember in our prayers Glenn and Rita, Sandy, Stephen, Brittany, and Grant, Tony, Linda, Tom and Bev, Jim and Judy, Greg, Judy, Don, Susie, Bill, Alan, Buddy, Brenda, and Gloria. Let us take these concerns and those other things that weigh upon our minds and hearts to our Lord in prayer. Great and glorious God, it is so easy in this time of trial to lose sight of your presence, to lose sight of the way that you are walking beside us through this time and to lose sight of the hope that you have given us in Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to trust you, and help us, Lord, to show our love to one another. Help us in this time of difficulty, in this time of isolation and trial, to find that your grace is sufficient that your Spirit and your Son, Jesus Christ, are with us all the time. Help us, Lord, to see, to hear, and to understand what you are saying to us today. We ask, Lord, that you heal those who are ill in body, in mind, and in spirit. And we ask you, Lord, to strengthen us to be your people in this time, to witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. And in this time where we yearn for each other's presence so deeply, may we carry that appreciation forward, not just for those who are a part of our church community, but also for those who are not, who feel like they have been living in isolation for years and years who are cut off and connected from the kind of community that we find in our church. May our hunger for connection empower our mission in the world. May we reach out, may we show love, and may we do the deeds that are necessary, the acts of discipleship that will sustain us in this time and in all time. Help us, Lord, to grow closer to you, to grow more Christ-like, and to better reflect your love and your grace and your power in the world today and in the days to come. We thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, who endured so much in this life for our sake. May we follow his example. And we now pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Hear the word of the Lord for us. Through these words, 
from the Gospel of Mark. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, may we encounter your word, not just with our ears and our minds, but with our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord, to submit to your authority. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice even now. Help us, Lord, to experience your presence with us and lead us on into the way that leads to life through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today, we're going to be talking about that which is demonic. Now, that's a difficult topic. And in our scripture in Mark, we read about Jesus in the synagogue, where he encounters a man possessed by an impure spirit. Jesus commands the spirit to come out of this man, and the spirit does so. The impure spirit does so. But if we take a good look at our lives and our world, we may indeed find that there are many things around us, and even a few things within us, that are also demonic. Now, I want to be really clear. What I'm going to be talking about today is not demons, per se, but that which is demonic. Demonic is an adjective, and it means demon-like. We can all find the demonic within ourselves without being possessed by demons. Indeed, human nature is such that we don't really need demons, spiritual beings from hell, in order to have things within us, in our character, in our lives, that are still demon-like. Now, this is a difficult word. It's a difficult thing to face up to. But the truth is, anything which goes against God, which goes against God's plan, God's word, and God's will for us, can rightly be called demonic. We don't need to be possessed by some spiritual being in order to exhibit this kind of behavior, thoughts, attitudes. We who know Jesus Christ have been freed from all of this, and yet within our lives, sin still clings. And if we take a close look at our priorities, at our commitments, at the way that we live, we will find many things which have become idols for us, things that we value more than the way of Christ. It may be a sad state of affairs, but because of the grace of Jesus Christ, we need not fear. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be healed and freed from these things. And there are so many things that are against the will of God 
that we live and do and think and feel on a daily basis. It's easy for us to look into the world and see all kinds of evil and things that we correctly identify as being against God's will. And yet, it's a lot harder to look into our own hearts and see the same thing. One of the issues of the past many years, but that's really come up in the last year, is the demonic presence of racism in our lives. We all, I'm sure, denounce overt racism, treating people of different races as less than. But there are so many ways that it seeps into our lives. Perhaps we feel a little fear when we see somebody of another color. Perhaps we feel like this country should be a white country. Perhaps we question the motives of people whose experience has been very different from our own. And perhaps we even deny the existence that there is a problem. Each and every one of these thoughts and attitudes is indeed demonic. Because God's word for us is that we should love everyone that we should welcome the foreigner and the stranger in our midst, that we should sacrifice for the good of the other. And yet our tendency is to protect our own safety. Our tendency is to be a little leery, a little uncertain of people whose culture is very different from our own. It's just one example. For many, many people, they make an idol of money and spend their lives on trying to acquire and to protect what they have acquired. And yet Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount that whenever somebody takes our coat, we should give them our cloak as well. Rather than trying to accumulate, we should be willing to give and to give and to give even when it is unjust to us. Because we as Christians are called to rely on God's justice, not the world's justice, not our own justice. We are called to sacrifice all of ourselves to show people the grace of Jesus Christ. Just as Christ sacrificed his life on the cross, to fully follow Christ, we should hold nothing back. Perhaps we view our own political or philosophical leanings as being the way to honor God. But if we're to take Jesus seriously, if we are to follow him with our whole selves, we should be willing to give up everything for the sake of the other. It doesn't matter whether they are worthy, whether they have earned it, because God's grace is free and unmerited. And if we live lives that reflect God's grace, we give people that same grace without merit, freely, without cost, without having earned it. There are so many ways that we, in this world, get wrapped up in the way of the world. We look at sinners and shake our heads and think, what is wrong with those people? And yet, we can be very slow to look at ourselves and see the sin in our own lives. Perhaps we judge others' sin as bigger and greater, deeper, than our own. And yet one of the key tenets of the Christian faith is that all sin is deadly. When Paul said the wages of sin is death, there was no hierarchy. There were no grades of 
more deadly sin and less deadly sin, all sin is deadly. But the grace of God in Jesus Christ gives us life even while we are yet sinners. I want to point out that this man that Jesus cast this impure spirit from was in the synagogue. He was there in the place of God, in the house of God, studying God, worshiping God. He was seeking God. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in the synagogue. The truth is, for each and every one of us who are not yet made perfect in Christ, we have an impure spirit, and it's our own spirit. It is a spirit that is being cleansed. It is a spirit that is being healed. But I'm not there yet, and I'm pretty certain none of us are. But we continue to open our lives to Jesus Christ. We continue to do the things that can help us to submit ourselves to the authority of Jesus Christ. We do these through acts of discipleship through actively working to open up the darkest parts of our hearts, to let the light of Christ shine in and cleanse us, forgive us, make us whole and holy. But to do that, we have to shine the light of Christ on every dark corner of our hearts. The greatest witness that we can have is like that line in the hymn, Amazing Grace. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now am found. Some of us may have very dramatic stories of conversion, and many of us may have stories of conversion that are much more subtle. But each and every day that we submit to the authority of Jesus Christ, we have victory. God has called us to grow in perfection. But God has not granted that with just a confession, we become instantly pure and holy and perfect, living by God's law at all times. But God has given us a fellowship, even if it's a fellowship right now that can't meet in person, so that we can hold each other in prayer, so that we can teach each other the Word of God, so that we can study together, so that we can confess to each other, so that we can encourage and hold each other accountable to following the way of Christ. In the coming year, especially once we begin to gather again in person, there will be a much greater focus on discipling one another, on holding each other accountable, on encouraging one another, praying for one another, on studying with one another, spending our lives in prayer. I pray that during this time before that time that we can meet together, that you begin this process. Begin it with confession, daily confession, looking at the things in our own lives that don't look like the life that Jesus led. And scripture gives us many, many ways that we can evaluate ourselves as to how we are doing. The Sermon on the Mount, excellent. Read the Sermon on the Mount, study it. And look for the ways with deep honesty that we fail to live up to the ideal held up in the Sermon on the Mount. Especially look at the Beatitudes. Do our lives reflect the Beatitudes? 
Are we meek? Do we look for the presence of God in the other? The fruit of the Spirit is another great passage of Scripture that we can use to assess our own lives. Where is the fruit visible in our lives? And where is it not? And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter on love. Does that fill our lives? Does every part of our being reflect that description of what love looks like? Wherever we fall even a little bit short of any of those things and all the other parts of Scripture that guide us, it's an opportunity to confess. It's an opportunity to ask Jesus what would you have to do with us? It's an opportunity for us to ask ourselves, what do we have to do with Jesus? God has promised that we will be cleansed. God has promised that we will be made holy. But it's a cooperative venture. God won't do it against our own will. And so we have to go through the steps to surrender our will, to surrender our attitudes, to surrender our priorities, and make the way of Christ our priority in all things. And this will be shown by the presence of the fruit of the Spirit, by the presence of love, by our lives reflecting the Beatitudes, and by having the ethics of the Sermon on the Mount. There is always hope and there is always goodness and God is at work so powerfully in us and among us. Be not afraid. Be not afraid of the demonic within ourselves because Jesus Christ can and will cast that out of us when we cooperate with God, when we practice discipleship through the means of grace, when we support and encourage one another, when we hold one another accountable, when we pray together, when we read scripture together, when we worship together, when we come to the Lord's table together, when we meet together in small groups, groups where we feel the presence of the love of God so powerfully that we can be open and honest with each other about our fears, about our biases, about our struggles. But Jesus Christ has the authority to be victor over all of those things. Trust God. Trust Jesus. Trust the Spirit. Open your lives. Open our lives to let God work within us. Amen. To live the call this week, begin practicing the means of grace. Begin a life of disciplined discipleship. And pay attention, pay careful attention to the areas of life where you look out into the world and see all the sin. See all of brokenness. And before addressing that, take some time to look for your own brokenness, your own sin. Listen for the word of God. Recognize the presence of Christ and the authority of Jesus. God's promises are absolutely certain. And God promises that we will be made whole. Let us hold up Jesus Christ as the example and live our lives as Christ lived. It'll be a struggle. It'll take work. We will fail many times, but his grace is sufficient. 
trust God with your whole life. This week, spend time in prayer. Ask God to reveal to you the areas that you need to grow. Spend time in Scripture, especially the Sermon on the Mount, the Fruit of the Spirit, and the chapter on love in 1 Corinthians. Let those be your guide. Let them be the measure. Strive for them. Because the way of Christ is the way of joy, even if the work to follow Christ is hard. The disciples struggled. Surely we will too. But he is faithful and just. His spirit fills us. We can trust God to change not only our lives, but our community and our world as we seek Christ and follow his authority. Let us pray. God of power and might, all the earth and all that is within it is yours. Give us the eyes to see the forces that are at work against you and the world around us and especially in our own minds and hearts. Give us the power to resist and stand against the rulers, the powers, the principalities of this world. And give us the power to love those who might seem unlovable to us because you assure us that you love them as you love us. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the life that you give us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn, Lord, Speak to Me. As we go about our lives, lives that are intertwined with the world in which we live, but also filled with the presence and spirit of God. Know that in every moment you have all of the help that you need to follow the way of Christ, to live lives of perfect love. Trust God. And as you go into the world, seek opportunities to share the love of Christ, the love that died for you and for me and for them, so that all will know the joy of the authority of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, be blessed, be empowered, be filled with the presence of God. Have a blessed week. Mm -hmm.